We now have South Asian Heritage Month in this country and for many years we've also celebrated Black History Month. But it's important to remember that our connections to the Commonwealth did not start when people like my grandfather arrived in this country from Punjab in North India nor when the Windrush generation arrived from the Caribbean after World War II. Rather, we have a much longer history that binds us, not just of empire but also of bravery and sacrifice which goes back to the First and Second World Wars. As we approach Remembrance Sunday, it's important for us to pause, reflect and remember the countless brave soldiers in the First and Second World Wars who fought for King and country. It's especially important that we remember those souls that history has often forgotten and recognise the vital contribution made by the countries from the Commonwealth. This film will focus on the contribution made by soldiers from the Commonwealth, from the Caribbean, the Indian subcontinent and Africa to the World Wars. Around 1.2 million soldiers and labourers from the Indian subcontinent, current day India, Pakistan and Bangladesh alone enlisted in World War I. They contributed a number of divisions and brigades to the European, Mediterranean, North African and East African theatres of war. Around 75,000 soldiers from the subcontinent died during World War I and a similar number were wounded. In the past few years here in the UK we have started to celebrate Windrush Day. But what is often forgotten is the important contribution made by the Caribbean to World War I. In 1915, Britain's War Office, which was initially opposed to the recruitment of West Indian soldiers, agreed to accept volunteers from the West Indies. Around 15,000 West Indians enlisted, including 10,000 from Jamaica. A new regiment was formed, the British West Indies Regiment, which served in Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Their participation initially was limited to labour duties, often under heavy fire. Work included the digging of trenches, building roads, acting as stretcher bearers and loading ships and trains. It was not until 1916 that the War Office relaxed its opposition to use in the British West Indies Regiment in combat, which then saw two battalions fighting in Palestine and Jordan against the Turks of the Ottoman Empire. African troops also played a key role. By the time the First World War ended, the British Army in East Africa was mainly composed of African soldiers from present-day Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Kenya and Uganda. Whilst many European and Indian soldiers struggled in the harsh African climate, for local inhabitants had the skills to survive and played a key role in containing the Germans in East Africa and defeating them in West Africa. At least 180,000 Africans served in the carrier corps in East Africa and provided logistical support to troops at the front line. Black South Africans also played an important role, even though they were limited to logistic roles, as the South African government feared arming them. 25,000 black South Africans served on the Western Front in 1916-1917 as part of the South African native labour contingent. Despite their valiant efforts in the First World War, the Indian subcontinent, the Caribbean and parts of Africa still remained part of the British Empire as World War II approached. By 1939, the empire fell into two distinct parts. There were the self-governing white dominions, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and South Africa, and there were those regions that were wholly or partly governed from London, including India, the West Indies and British colonies in Africa and the Far East. At the outbreak of war, India and the other colonial parts of the empire had no choice and automatically joined in on the war on the side of Britain. The Dominions made their own decision to enter the war on the British side. At the height of the Second World War, more than 2.5 million Indian troops were fighting around the globe, producing the largest volunteer army in history. Indian soldiers fought in Burma, North and East Africa, Italy and Greece. The Royal Indian Air Force fought against the Japanese while Royal Indian Navy ships fought in the North Atlantic and the Mediterranean. Indian pilots also fought in the Battle of Britain. In the West Indies, thousands of men joined the local Home Guard and the British Army. They were eventually sent to Europe for training, but few were allowed to fight on the front line. Approximately 5,500 West Indian RAF personnel came to Britain in 1944 and 1945. From 1944, West Indian women served in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, an auxiliary territorial service in Britain, whilst over 40,000 workers volunteered to live and work as agricultural labourers in the USA. More than half a million Africans served as combatants as well as war workers in World War II for Britain, with a further half a million serving for France and Belgium. 
troops from East and West Africa fought against the Japanese in Southeast Asia in 1943 and 1944. It's widely believed by historians that had it not been for the contribution of the soldiers from the Commonwealth, the history of the world would look vastly different today. So why is this so important? It is important that we don't ignore the vital contribution made by those from the Commonwealth at a time when they were not even independent nations. Their positive contribution sowed the seeds for the eventual victory in the wars and the diverse country that we have now, where different cultures, faiths and ethnicities work, play, study and live together side by side just as our brave soldiers did in the two world wars. And whilst in recent years we have developed Pacific celebrations to mark our diversity with South Asian Heritage Month and Black History Month as two examples, it's important to remember that Black and Asian history is also British history going back well beyond the arrival of our immigrant grandparents and forefathers. By recognising our shared history, in all its many facets, we honour and acknowledge those brave souls who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we do today. <laughs>